All right, yeah, okay, we're, we're going, we're going, okay. All right, people, it's this show. Yeah, I mean, geez, you might as well call Control Breakers a zombie at this point, because it's back from the dead. <laughs> uh, yep, so we're going to talk about two things, and we're looking to make the show a little more frequent since... Yeah, yeah, our, our main kicked around the idea as we are on the eve of a new console generation. Even if we don't have anything re- to review, it would still be nice to talk about gaming news, because yeah, Lord knows we do it anyway. Yeah, we talk about it all the time when we're, you know, up for, before we record other things, so it's like, why not just do it? <laughs> Yeah, why not just record? Lord knows we have fans who are uh, gamers and who care what we have to think on the right. subject. So why not? Everybody wins. Right. So, and, oh, I just want to put this out there. We're not going to talk anything anymore about Injustice until Injustice 2 is announced. <laughs> yeah, th- th- this is this is, this can constitute as the first story. Armin is officially sick of Injustice. I, I am sick of Injustice. I'm sick of questions about it. I, I don't care about it anymore. The ship has sailed. It's out of here. I never want to talk about it again. It's but done, guys. Team. I don't want to make request videos or what skins are I, I think are going to be in it. It's over. It's For done. DLC characters are mean. Right, DLC. Please don't question it anymore. You know what? It's like, I can't blame you for this. I mean, Injustice, it was a fun ride while it lasted, but really, what more can we do about it? We've done our matchups. We've done uh, friggin', you know, who we would like to see as DLC. We talked about it to death before it came out. You even reviewed the comic for crying out loud. Yeah, I made it to, like, I don't know, 22 issues, and I might continue that. No, I'll probably continue that. Okay. Yeah, again, it's like, I, I don't know what more we could reasonably say on exactly. the subject. Check and I don't want to keep doing videos of it because it's just fucking boring. Injustice. It's like chocolate cake. It's really good, but who can eat chocolate cake every day? Probably Elf. I think Elf mm-hmm. could do it. I mean, he <laughs> ate cats, so if you put like a cat in a chocolate cake... Mmm, cat cake. See, you know, that's delicious. Cat cake. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so anyway, let's start off. Hey, Joel. If I told you the Titanic was sinking, right... Uh huh. And you could jump ship to another Titanic. <laughs> would you do it? Well, it depends if Leonardo DiCaprio is on one of the Titanics. Okay, he's well, dreamy. Leonardo DiCaprio is Halo, but oh. you're jumping from Halo to Farmville because that's oh. what Don Matrick did. Jeez. <laughs> you know, stupid face from fucking Microsoft. You know what? It must suck to be Don Matrick because forever <laughs> now. Your face will be scarred into the minds of every gamer. Whenever they think of the Xbox One boondoggle, they will think of you. <laughs> now, you know, his departure came kind of as a surprise, but, like, you got to know at a corporate level, this didn't come off as, like, oh, I'm, okay, I'm leaving tomorrow, guys. Uh, I think what they did was, you know, this I'm has to be in the early works. Retirement. Uh, my suspicion is, like, this was in the works for, like, months, right? Because it's, right. it's like a CEO type of, you know, a giant position. Yeah. I think they put his face out there with the Xbox just to put all that flame on him. <laughs> oh, they, you th- he was going to leave. You think he was a sacrificial oh, lamb? Yeah. You think they let him to the slaughter, let him get burned? I mean, if you were about to quit, I'd be like, all right, Joel, go out there and review some Deadpool and give a shitty scores. Yeah, it's like, j- just do it. I mean, they can't hurt you. You'll be gone in a week. Right, exactly. So he moves to the other thing where it's like, oh, microtransactions are our life and always online is a must. <laughs> Yeah, really. I mean, maybe maybe the man just found his calling. Maybe he maybe he got to Zynga and he's like, you know what? I'm home. This is where I was always meant to be. <laughs> and, and then they give him a big old hug and water his crops. <laughs> that sounds amazing. You know, I imagine after this, we will never hear of Matrick ever again. That is ever. unless he royally screws the pooch over at Zynga. Well, they've been sinking so fast. I don't think you possibly can. I mean, you know, they probably looked at him. He's like, hey, guys, if you need me to sink that ship, I'm coming. It's like throwing a Molotov cocktail at a house that was already on fire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, well, you certainly can't make it any worse. Now, obviously, our people are going to ask because we haven't really covered it since Xbox reversed their decision, right? Um, here's the thing. It's still only available in the 21 countries initially re- released. Oh, yeah, wasn't there, like, a big deal that, like, the Witcher guys from Poland, they couldn't even play their own game? That's the thing, and it's still like that. They haven't said, oh, it's available worldwide. No, it's only available in the countries they stated it will be available Uh before. And, you know, they reversed, okay, always online, but you still have to patch it the first time and enable that, right? But then comes all the bullshit where they were like, well, it's built into the system. You have to have it. It's (laughs) cloud computing. They're like, fuck it, we pull the plug. It's like, you just said you can't. 
Yeah, it's like nope, nope. It's built from the ground up. We we built it with this in mind. There's, There's no way we can flip a switch. There's three hundred thousand server farms helping you calculate how you fucking teabag that guy. Yeah, we can't flip the switch. We can't flip it all. Oh, 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 oh you're at our door with uh, torches and pitchforks. Okay, we'll go flip the. We'll switch just flip that little switch. Yeah, what a bunch so, of shit. So again, when you know people are like, oh well, I guess I'll buy an Xbox One now. No. Why? Why? A, they wanted to fuck you. B, they lied about fucking you and that it C, was the only no way. no one says they're not going to fuck you in a year. Exactly. Again, it's like being in a house with, you know, like the dude from Deliverance. It's like, you got a purty mouth, boy. You ain't getting out of this. Oh, oh, oh no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, you know, we'll just sit here in the same house then for a year, and I promise I won't do it again. Wink. <laughs> I don't know why you would ever trust Microsoft at this point. They, right. they literally made their intentions known. We want to fuck you, the consumer. But they got Halo. Uh, the is, 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 is Halo worth it? Again, no, is any not. of their series worth it? No. And, and, and ask yourself that before you pre-order, before you throw money down. Is it worth it? And before you ask, why yes. If the situation was the other way around and Sony wanted to fuck me. I would be then, straight on back on Microsoft bandwagon. Yeah, I would I would be the first one. I would be raising that no, Xbox. I one was on the time. fucking Xbox three sixty bandwagon when Sony fucked me for the first year. Yeah, yeah. With the I mean, PS three. I mean that was a disappointment and fucking like colossal. Yeah. I mean, if you buy an Xbox One, you are literally helping contribute to the problems in the gaming industry. You are literally saying that these shitty practices by Microsoft are okay. Exactly. Everyone needs to say, no, this isn't okay. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Like, it's hard to believe that Sony got to be, like, the biggest hero. That They got to be, like, friggin', you know, Achilles-level heroes just by doing, just, like, by doing one good thing. They got to be the fucking heroes of this generation by staying the same and not improving anything. That's pathetic. Yeah, that's very pathetic. Ugh. That's very pathetic. I, I, I weep for the future of gaming. Yeah. But speaking of the future of gaming, we actually have something awesome to talk about. All right, wait, hold on. Yeah, okay, I'm done fapping. Yeah, okay, maybe I need to get one into... <laughs> okay, good. Now that we've thoroughly come... Jesus Christ, that it. trailer. I, I think I watched it like six times in a row. Me too. Of course, for those of you who aren't playing along at home, we are talking about what was the biggest uh, gaming story on the internet today. Grand Theft Auto Five gameplay trailer! Um, okay, can, can I start off with the minor things I noticed in the detail? Shoot. First and foremost, golfing... Biking, like track and tennis, are full fledged games with actual physics and all yeah. that. And shooting range, that too. Yeah. Don't forget the shooting range. It, it's full, like, you can drive jets, airplanes, choppers. That's what I love about Rockstar, that they seem almost insane in the amount of detail they put into their games. Like, we're going to build another little game right here that 90% of players may never touch. It's like, and they showed off, you know, how high in the sky you can get. They literally said mm -hmm. from the highest parts of the sky to the lowest parts of the ocean. And then you see the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, with like a bunch of ships and everything. And you know that's going to play a part in a uh -huh. mission. Uh-huh. Got it. And now, a car customization? Yes, thank you. That's finally back. I mean, and character customization. Character customization. Not only that, they confirmed a full hunting game. You yes. would just be able to go into the wilderness, hunt, set tracks, and it's literally everything you could want in a game. Red Dead Redemption like a motherfucker up in uh, there. That, that's what I love about Rockstar is that like they're always always learning, always adapting, and always adding new shit. Uh-huh. The thing that got me is, you know, one of the things that has always drawn me to the Grand Theft Auto series is, you know, like the uh, gang management. Yes. Uh, thing and like the gang war thing now obviously you're not in a gang per se in this you know you're a group of thieves pulling off heist but as we can clearly see besides the three main characters you can also hire specialists to help you out right right guys well, with different stats and everything the thing that really blew my mind is like i thought it was gonna, just gonna be like the one mission from grand theft auto 4 you know it's like oh here's the heist here's how you do it yeah. But then they confirmed that you have to actually plan the entry point, who goes where, who does what. I was like, oh, my God. And you can do it in completely different styles depending on who you take, as we saw in the trailer. Do you want to go quiet and use tear gas, or do you want to go loud? Right, right. I I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to go loud. 
All right, well, it's the opposite for me, so. <laughs> and speaking of loud, uh, gun customization now. You just can't customize yourself and your cars. Oh, yeah. You can also customize guns. Silencers, extra clips, uh, you know, basic, basically all the Call of Duty shit that you love is now in Grand Theft Auto. And speaking of which, you, we got to see a little bit of the combat there. Man, have they Holy made it so much that faster. amazing. You can run and shoot at the same time. Isn't that amazing? Not only that, like, it, it reminded me of, like, they finally refined that engine. Because, like, while Red Dead and, you know, Grand Theft Auto 4 had a good engine, it kind of looked... Yeah. It was a little off. Yeah, well, well, the combat has always kind of been, like, one of those weird things. Yeah, yeah. Like, like it always bugged me in Grand Theft Auto 4. If a dude was behind you, you were basically dead because Nico couldn't turn the fuck around right. to save his life. <laughs> well, like, that, that, that was real bullshit. Uh, again, as we mentioned before, you know, there's three playable characters, and you can change on the fly like crazy. Oh, so good. Uh, and uh, we we saw a little bit of the multiplayer there, just like a huge city filled with people doing stuff. Oh, that looked amazing. I can't wait Fl- to actually see that one. F- flying jets and everything, it looked almost Battlefield-like. Oh, it did. Uh, uh, so what, th- what was your favorite part of the trailer? Oh, God, that, that's so... I, 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 besides the stuff I already mentioned... Uh, I love the idea that you can actually invest money now, play the stock markets, yeah. and buy property. Now, the first thing I thought of when I saw that was, can I play the market as in, I put my stocks in this, and then I go and burn their fucking rivals? Yeah, that's what I want. So I'm like, <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. If I, you know, put my stocks into ammunition and then buy a bunch of guns... <laughs> Yeah, what can I do with that shit? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, how can I game the stock market on this one? Oh, or, man, you know, I'm thinking like a Republican now. Yeah, really. How, how do I game the system on this one and screw everybody else? <laughs> and, you know, that's kind of a theme that I've noticed with this, you know, the divide between rich and poor and everything, because the three main characters come from three very different economic backgrounds. Right. You got the rich, well-off guy, the really poor redneck guy, and the dude on the street trying to work his way up. Uh-huh. So I imagine that is going to play very heavily into the themes of this game. As always, you know, Grand Theft Auto is more than just, you know, uh, crazy action in a free-roaming world. Believe it or not, I don't play the game just to beat hookers. I play it for the story. Oh, uh, that's the exact reason I play I rarely ever goof off unless I'm just like, fuck it, time to go to bed. I'm going to kill a hooker. Yeah, that, that's me well, too. Well, that or real life. Yeah, well, yeah, well, there's always that. I, I know me when I play, I'm like, okay, I made lots of uh, progress in the story tonight. It's like exactly now. It's like five minutes to bed. Hmm, I'm gonna take this flamethrower and go over to that crack house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having so much fun. Ooh, bounty hunting. That's another thing. That's another oh, side mission. Yes. So I can finally live my fantasy of being Dog the Bounty Hunter <laughs> and having a blonde lady with huge tits named Beth. That this sounds is... perfect. Sorry, I had to shake the dust off these old references. I'm sure I'm an old man now making Dog the Bounty Hunter jokes. Yeah, you really 2005, are. 2005, Paul, they want me back. Oh, <laughs> five. I think you're still a little too far in the future there. <laughs> yeah, probably. Well, I was ahead of my time back then. <laughs> um, but, but, but Paula Dean, there you go. Replace my dog, the bounty hunter joke, with a Paula Dean joke. Wah, wah. That, that's nice and topical. Always. Yep. So, uh, honestly, to me, just the, the scope of the game. The scope yeah, I mean, of everything it, it, was... It, it looks huge. It looks bigger than Red Dead. It looks bigger than San Andreas. I, I guess the rumors could be true where they said it was nine times the size of Red Dead. I Wow. Guess that's probably true because it looked like it. I mean, especially no, that approaching shot where they're on the dam all the way on the outskirts. Yeah, And then the yeah, jet yeah. flies and you see the huge city. For real. Now, here's my question. Uh, is there such a thing as too big in an open world game? Uh, No. Because, I mean, like, I've played some pretty huge games. Like, I remember my first time playing Oblivion. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is so big I could get lost. Do you think that they would implement something like a fast travel system for this Grand Theft Auto if it's really that big? Right. The, the, the fast travel system, that looked interesting because it kind of goes to, like, that Google earth Yeah, Google I guess. In, yeah, instead of, you know, just fast traveling, you can literally, like, quantum leap from one of the three main characters. Right. Which, which I, I guess that's their way of getting around it. Right, right. Which I'm, I'm fine with that. I guess. Um, all I want is co-op to be confirmed, though. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they, they, they've been. I thought they did, but they've been kind of cagey about it. Yeah, yeah. Like again, imagine if you know you and I could play this game together. Be like, hey, Armin, you, you want to help me rob this armored car? 
And you're like, yeah, okay, let's go rob this armored car then. Also, by default, I'd have to be the redneck guy. Because no, Sean want... would play the black guy. I want to be the redneck guy. Yes, you can't. I live closer to Texas than you. Damn it, you're right. Okay, so you, you be the redneck, Sean can be the black guy, and I will be the... What is it? Well, the it'll be just like real guy. life. We both do crimes in our boxers. There you go. <laughs> Only your crime is called this podcast. <laughs> all, <laughs> all of our podcasts. Are a crime against something. A crime against good taste. Yeah, if you're... <laughs> Clearly none of that if you're listening to this. Yeah, that's right. Everyone listening, you are accessories to our crimes. Oh, you're terrible people. <laughs> and we you. love you for it. <laughs> you get a crack rock and you get a crack rock. I'll ship them to you. Leave your address in the comments. Speaking of crack rocks, there's a thing that the Grand Theft Auto series has never actually crossed the line on. Literally, well, actually, no, I think they did in one of the DS games. Uh, like letting you actually sell drugs to make money, like on the corner. <laughs> like amazing. I guess it does sound amazing I guess that's like just a line that they're afraid to cross where it's like okay you know b- beating up hookers and stealing cars is one thing but literally dealing drugs that's terrible <laughs> well it's strange that you know when you look at the history of the Grand Theft Auto games they've been strangely anti-drug when you think about it I mean yeah. Grand Theft Auto 3 you had Spank which was the source of all evil and that the hero really tried to beat uh, in Vice City you had to, uh, you know Tommy Versetti, he sold a lot of drugs, but that was ultimately his downfall. And San Andreas is a huge thing against how dangerous crack was. <laughs> well, there we go. So yeah, kids, stay off drugs and play Grand Theft Auto is what we're trying to say. Yep. So <laughs> there we go, guys. That was our uh, quicker episode. Um, we hope you like it. Yeah, let us know what you thought about the trailers and uh, what was your favorite part of that whole Grand Theft Auto trailer and the whole Don Matrick is an um, idiot. <laughs> if Don Matrick was in Grand Theft Auto, what do you think would happen? <laughs> I'd shoot him. <laughs> well, wait, wait. I mean, come on. You, you can't be more creative about it. Okay. Uh, no, I can't. I need time to plan that much torture. I, I'd put a rainbow parachute on him. I'd drag him to the top of the mountain, then push him off. 